I would start with a quote used by the president of the Humboldt Foundation at the New Year's reception this year. And this is maybe my favorite quote by Alexander von Humboldt. The unveiling of truth is unthinkable without the divergence of opinions, because the truth is not recognized in its entirety at once and by all at the same time. I totally agree. It takes a village not only to raise a child, but also to gain knowledge. And this epistemic benefit of diversity was the topic of my research stay in Japan. Now, how is and how was diversity discussed in academia? For example, the racism from which our society suffers today reaches back to academic debates of the 18th century. The topic was the origin of the different human phenotypes, equated with races. And there were two parties, those who assumed one origin for all humans and those who assumed different roots. Alexander von Humboldt argued for one origin and thereby explicitly against racism, for example, in his famous Cosmos. By asserting the unity of humanity, we also resist any unfortunate assumption of higher and lower human races. His brother Wilhelm likewise took a stance against racism, for example in his writing on the diversity of human language construction. He writes, However different humans may be in size, color, body shape and facial features, their mental abilities are the same. The opposite claim has probably never been made seriously and out of impartial conviction, but only out of sheer greed for profit and ridiculous pride in color. Wilhelm defends the assumption that we are one family. The diverse languages which we speak set us apart, but the general ability to use language unites us as one family. Language combines common terms or ideas with the individual perception of the world to form a coherent whole called erkenntnis or knowledge. And here we reach a limitation of language and translation because actually I cannot translate the German term Erkenntnis. It may refer to knowledge, but also to insight, perception, cognition, finding and so much more. However, the diversity of languages is not only a problem, but also an opportunity. Wilhelm said that language is worldview. And since our languages differ, our worldviews differ and can enhance each other. Learning a new language always enables us to see the world in a different way. Humboldt assumed that language is starting from the intellect, affecting the intellect. And therefore, language and thinking are like chicken and egg. We cannot tell which came first, but we know that both depend on each other and form a kind of circle. And this leads me to a non-historical part of my research. Through language, we express our biases and reproduce them, often unconsciously. The term bias refers to a limited perspective and implicit biases describe unconscious evaluative preferences. They include gender stereotypes or racial stereotypes. And both kinds of stereotypes are related to implicit associations, such as the conceptual pairs male leader and female helper. 
For now, I will concentrate on such gender bias. We cannot change that we are biased, but we can change the specific biases we have towards other people. And biases seem to work in both directions. Our ideas and our perceptions influence each other and language connects them. For example, in German we have a grammatical gender. This is expressed in the noun ending or the pronoun, like in these cases der Baum and die Blume. And as you can see, even such asexual or even abiological things may be masculine or feminine in terms of grammar. Now, I argue that by choosing he or she, we also ascribe a social gender and the related implicit biases to such things. An interesting example are artificial intelligence devices, like the robot Pepper. This is Pepper. So, the grammatical gender of robot in German is masculine. So, Pepper is mostly addressed in masculine terms. Mostly. But my case study is the lady robot Josie Pepper. She works at the Munich airport. Now, why is she addressed in feminine terms and even called a lady robot? I argue that Pepper is intuitively perceived as female because of the stereotypes related to the job. Just like the stereotypically female stewardess, she is supposed to help, to calm and to entertain people under stress. And this illustrates that biases work in both directions and are conveyed by language. Feminine pronouns or names can trigger thoughts of care or service jobs, just as thinking of care or service jobs can trigger thoughts of female persons. But that's not all. Josie Pepper is flirting with the male passengers. What might seem cute in the first instance is exactly the problem. What do we communicate, for example, to our children by programming her to flirt while her male colleagues don't and they don't? She is nice and attentive to our needs, but we don't have to take her seriously. She is a helper, not a leader. Now, how likely is it that young women and girls exposed to these stereotypes will go on and occupy leading positions as philosophers, pilots or presidents? I don't know. A related interdisciplinary question for linguistics, robotics, social sciences or ethics is should we design robots in a gender stereotypical way, the care bot Emma and the mechanic Paul? Because, for example, in the field of care work, Emma would be better accepted by the patients? Or should we design and address them counter-stereotypically, the mechanic Emma and the carebot Paul, to prevent the reproduction of biases? Well, my answer is neither nor. Instead, diversity is the answer. Because such counter-stereotypes may always turn into new stereotypes. And history has proven that a change from a male to a female attribution does not lead to a change of the biases, to fewer biases, but to a change in the biases themselves. This is called masculinization or feminization of occupations. And it has been directly linked to a change in the prestige level of that occupation. So, therefore, this is not the answer. But if Josie Pepper was joined by a Joe Pepper and if either both or none of them flirted, they would not reproduce any gender stereotypes. Thus, the best way 
to change our biases is to promote diversity in all areas of society and of course not only concerning artificial intelligence. By creating diverse role models like these representing diverse gender identities, we would offer our children a world full of possibilities.